Hey folks, welcome to Market Correction Analysis for August 14th, 2007. What a bloodbath today, guys. No doubt about it. Every buy program was met with resistance and it got smacked back down again. No doubt about that. We saw an insane amount of uh, volume towards the end of the day, especially in the heavy, heavy sell-off. And what you're looking at right here, again, I'm not even going to go into announcements today. We had an interesting day today, and there's not much to say. I just want to get right into this market because we have a lot to talk about today on a technical basis. Look at this today, guys. We saw a hard sell early in the day. Nice little try attempt at recovery. But what do we notice about this chart? And by now, all you guys that are watching should be analyzing this chart. The second you guys see this chart, you guys should know what I'm going to say even before. And look at what we said. Look at this 20 moving average. Held it right there. Again, right there. Held it underneath again. Anytime you can't get above the 20, it's just a horrible bear signal. All right? And yesterday, if you guys were watching the video yesterday, you guys know we talked about how the market sold off right into the close and how that was a negative sign. We talked about over the weekend how the infusion of money from the Fed was a possibility for a, maybe a slight a flattening out of the market. We didn't really see a big move up coming because of all the negativity in the market and how negative this credit issue is. And this credit is bad, guys. This is bad. We've been saying this for weeks now. We were pretty much the first one out in the street to call the correction that we, we know of. And we said on July 20th, correction's coming, and bam, the Dow is now about 20, 30, 40 points away from 13,000. All right, this is just ugly. The NASDAQ closed down 43 points today, closing right on its 200 one more time. We have a possible breakdown technical scenario today, guys. This is big time. All right, again, I want to point out, look at this trend. You don't get a better trend line than this, guys. Could failed here to push above it. Failed here to push above it. Failed here to push above it. And they even got it above, and the wick went above, but they closed the candle below. And unless we, we know by now, all you guys know that by now, if the candle does not close above a uh, trend line, it is not a breakout. And again, that's what we saw. So they fooled a lot of amateurs here on thinking the market was going to break up. However, it did not, and we sold down to new lows, and this is where we closed. Look at this buy volume bar on the last, ca last candle leading into 4 o'clock. Look at the size of volume here comparatively to the rest of the day. Not even close. This amount of volume was huge, guys. It is not a good sign. And we're going to go into some things right now that are going to be pretty serious. All right, let's look at the daily, guys. What do we have on the daily? We have this steep sell here that bounced back up here where we called off that we said we thought we'd get to the 20. We got to that 20 moving average. We sold off again. They tried to rally us up quickly here on the Fed infusion. And what do we do? We closed down here today. Ugly, ugly, ugly possible breakdown scenario. Now, you guys know when we, we were saying that if we close below... 13, 1,432 on the ES futures, and 1,427, we had a possible breakdown that would yield on the S&P 60 to 80 points on the downside to March lows, all right? March lows was a big drop here, folks, and I hope everyone's aware of that. And now I want to go into some odds and ends. Let's look at the NASDAQ. Again, the NASDAQ, we talk about this moving average. This is a breakdown right here, all right? We close below this line. This 200 gets broken and it gets taken out, we are going down to the March lows again, folks. This is a very ugly day. I have to be honest with you guys, I'm a little surprised going into Options X. Options X week is notoriously an up week, all right, or at least a flat week, all right? In addition, with the Fed on the sidelines here ready to jump in again, I'm very surprised that they sold things as hard as they did. But there were some very negative things going on in the market today. We had TMA, Thornburg Mortgage, halted. Just three days ago, they came out and said how, how they were going to do fine. Well, guess what? They got halted today. It looks looks pretty much done for them. Let's look at that chart. Look at this chart, guys. Three days ago, when the stock's trading right around here, they come out and say, we're doing all right. Right here, they halt the stock. All right? This is after it's already down $6 today. All right? Almost $7 in one day, down to 9 and change. All right? This stock, it's not good. When they halt the stock, pen, news pending, it is not good, folks. All right. What I want to do is also look at the SPY, folks. And what we do at the SPY, you guys know about this breakdown. I've been calling on the SPY, or we have been calling it in the moneystocks.com. You get a break at this point where we pretty much closed there today, guys. And I'm going to put two scenarios to you guys right now. One is we technically had a, had a head and shoulders pattern in the market. We closed below it today. All right. We broke down technically just by a hair, though. All right. And the reason I'm, why I'm worried is because. With the Fed on the sidelines, you're never 100% sure. So what we want to look for is the lows to get taken out tomorrow and a strong push down to signal that we are continuing this correction and that will yield 
the move on the SPX down to the lows from, from March, all right? Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you, this is the SPX intraday, but now I'm going to show you where we get we got our original target breakdown point from, so you guys can all see this, all right? And what we're going to do is we look at bigger time frames. Bigger time frames yield, yield better moves for us to view, and I want to show this to you guys because this is where we, it all comes down to. We have a look at this pattern. Shoulder, head, shoulder. You guys know this is a classic bear pattern, all right? And this signals that we have a breakdown. Once once it's taken out here, we have a, a breakdown, and look at that. This is the 180 minute, and I, normally we look at the 60 minute, but on my little screen here, I can't show it to you in that little bit. A close below this line technically is a breakdown, and look at where we close today on the SPY. That's below. All right, so a head and shoulders breakdown pattern. If it doesn't get saved tomorrow, all right, and again, I repeat, if we don't get a save tomorrow, it could get very ugly, and we could see a big, big drop. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some other patterns here on the NASDAQ. All right, and this is how you want to confirm. You want to look at every different index. You want to confirm it on every different time frame. And again, looking at this pattern, what do we have? Head, shoulders, shoulder, head, shoulder. And now we draw a line in here. Where did that close? Below. All right. Very negative, folks. We closed at the low of the day. If And again, I repeat, two scenarios. One is we dropped down 60 to 80 points on the SPX because we technically broken down. To do that, we need confirmation tomorrow, though. All right. We need the market to close lower tomorrow again. And that will give us confirmation. The other scenario is this. The Fed comes in again. All right. The other scenario is that the second scenario is the Fed comes in again. You have options expiration, so big money is going to be thrown at this market to try and keep it afloat for now. And, <coughs> and they're going to try and support this market till at least early next week. All right. Now, I am in very much in doubt because we had a breakdown here that this, they can do this. All right. We will find out soon enough. Absolutely. Now, what I want to do is direct your attention to the ES futures chart. All right. And another bearish sign. Not only did we have the head and shoulders pattern here. In the uh, looking at the 180 minute, and normally I'd look at the 60 minute, but we want to look at this so you guys can all see it. So we expand the chart a little to a bigger time frame, and I want you to look at this bottom here. Look at this trend line I'm going to draw here. Look at how borderline this is. All right, you look at this here. What do we see? We see one hit, two hits, three hits, four hits, and we're right hovering on this line. And this is again why we're going to wait till tomorrow to see exactly what happens. Because if we push down and take out this low right here, things are things were going down hard. All right, it would take a Fed infusion again, or something with interest rates to come in. And again, tomorrow the second scenario not only was the Fed coming back in, but also we have the CPI numbers and options ex options expiration Friday. So again, remember CPI numbers. Now remember, guys, if the CPI numbers show increase in inflation, that means the Fed has to stay away and they cannot infuse more money into the market. And they can't raise interest, I mean, lower interest rates. Because lowering interest rates would only cause the dollar to weaken, which would raise inflation risk more. So the, the only key tomorrow is going to be this. If those CPI numbers come out, and you guys know how I feel about economic numbers. I think they're BS. We believe in the technicals. I think the economic numbers are BS. But if they do come out, which they very well might, and show a decrease in inflation, that could save the market here. All right, we could see a near-term push-up. By the way, guys, I don't care what anyone says. Even if they save the market tomorrow, we're still going to March lows. It's just a near-term fix, a near-term little little injection of, of, of adrenaline into this market to try and keep it afloat here so the big boys can unload. That's all it would be. So I've shown you technically what's going on in this market. You've seen multiple patterns of the SPY, the ES futures, the S&P co contract from September futures, and you've seen the NASDAQ. All are showing we're on the verge of a big breakdown here that's going to send us to March lows. We think that this will happen. It's just a matter of can they save it in time, all right? Can the big money come in and support this, this market? All right, what I want to also talk to you about is something very scary. Today, one of the money markets were funds, it was announced that they were not redeeming the money market. Now, we had talked about this in the chat room, which you all should be joining here because we go over a lot of technicals, a lot of level two stuff, but we warned last week that... We thought and we had heard rumors that these money market funds who invested in AAA credit were in trouble. Now, everyone knows money markets are supposed to be the safest thing in all, in, of all. And now all of a sudden, this one comes out and says it's not going to redeem your money? Redemptions aren't being honored? Come on, give me a break. Are you kidding me here? This is, this is, 
if, if, and I'm putting a big if here, guys, if this money market situation turns out to be bigger, every person who sits in cash in, in, a, in a, whether it's a, any portfolio, is generally in a money market. Watch for these money markets to start losing money, guys. And I hate to say this, but it's very possible that some of these money markets could start declining in value because of these investments. Be careful. All right, folks, that's all for today. Be watchful of tomorrow. You know I've set the, the scenarios for tomorrow. Watch out what's going on. The ES futures are down 2.25 after hours here. Um, we think that we will see the CPI come out possibly lower tomorrow. If it doesn't, watch out. Have a wonderful evening, and be careful. Cash is king right now.